welcome to Africunia TV News Now for August the 2nd, 2021. Reaching here in Lagos, Nigeria. Many thanks for joining us. I'm Deborah Aze. And I am Ayo Lua. First, we begin from the Nigerian scene with 438.37 billion naira recorded as subsidy payments for the full six months of 2021. Nigeria's revenue problems appear not to abate anytime soon as it continues to take a toll on contribution of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, to the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee, FAAC, on the mining acquirable revenue from oil. In its latest funding performance, the NNPC recorded 281.97 billion as net revenue to FAAC between January and June 2021, leaving a deficit of 973.86 billion naira as against the projected revenue of 1.25 trillion naira for the period. The corporation did not make any remittance in April, with oil price experiencing a rebound. The federal government might continue to find it difficult to sustain subsidy payments or even borrow to fund subsidies to avoid the backlash from household dealings with poverty and inflation. Subsidy payments have continued to rise not just due to low production, but also as a result of the surge in consumption, especially smuggling. The Minister of State of Petroleum Resources, Tim Perez Silva, has called for synergy among agencies in the country to tackle the increasing smuggling of premium motor spirits across the nation borders. After he said the country daily petroleum consumption stood at 102 million litres per day in the month of May. And in more stories, the fear of complications in new COVID 19 cases and related deaths is real as doctors under the aegis of National Association of Resident Doctors begin a nationwide industrial action today over unpaid salaries. Benefits to the families of members that lost their lives to the pandemic and asset allowances. A breakdown shows that 16,000 resident doctors out of about 40,000 doctors working in Nigeria, representing about 40% of registered doctors, are going to down to today. That means a lot of medical appointments and surgeries are going to be cancelled. Most patients on admission are going to be sent home and more hospitals will stop admitting new patients because they will not have the capacity to cater for them. In the last four days, Nigeria has recorded an average of 500 COVID-19 cases in daily figures as the government struggles to deal with a new and more infectious variant of the virus. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control NCDC figures, 497 cases were recorded on Saturday, 590 cases on Friday, 558 cases on Thursday, and 535 cases reported on Wednesday, which is now the highest daily increase in the country since March 4, 2021, when 708 cases were registered. The doctor strike is also coming at a time of outbreak of cholera in more than 15 states of the Federation. In the last 48 hours, that toll from cholera rose to 69 as cases exceed 1,000 in the Federal Capital Territory. While the disease has already killed 169 residents and infected 5,221 in Kano. Already, the NCDC has confirmed 522 deaths and 22,130 suspected cases in the Federal Capital Territory and 18 states. And away from that story in business, the dollar put back at the parallel markets at the weekend on the strength of rising market optimism and ease of panic over the stoppage of foreign exchange sale to the bureau the change operators. The dollar traded between 505 per dollar and 515 per dollar in the Lagos market at the weekend. On Wednesday, a day after the announcement of the new policy by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, the Naira fell to 525 Naira per dollar, rising the fear that it would eat 550 Naira per dollar in the next few weeks. There will be panic across the market after a meeting by the body of bank chief executive officers where it's projected that the exchange rate would recover at the least 423 Naira per dollar. Deposit money banks also commenced aggressive marketing of the personal travel allowances and business travel allowances through personalized messages and other platforms at the weekend. And on the African scene, the post of Prime Minister is still vacant and MPs critical of the President have been arrested. A week after K.E. Sahid took part in Tunisia, fear of an authoritarian drift prompted some observers to express their concern on Sunday. Mr. Sahid granted himself full powers on July the 25th 
and suspended parliament, saying he wanted to save a small Maghreb country which has been plagued by months of political deadlocks and a new deadly spike in COVID-19. Tunisia has one of the world's official debt rates. In establishing this exceptional regime, denounced by his opponents in the Islamist-inspired Another Party as a coup d'etat, Mr. Said also lifted the parliamentary immunity of deputies in this context. Several arrests have caused controversy in the last three days. Two deputies of the Islamo nationalist movement, Al Karama, an ultra conservative party allied to another, were arrested on Saturday night. Zid and Mohammed Afiz are in custody as part of an investigation by the military justice, explained on Facebook. The leader of Al Karama, Saifdin Makhlis, according to the lawyer who is very hostile to the president, Sehi, he and two other deputies are being prosecuted in a case relating to an altercation that occurred in March at the airport in Tunis. They are suspected of having insulted brother police officers who had forbidden her woman to travel. And we move to Zambia, where they deployed the military to curb escalating political violence ahead of elections on August the 12th. President Edgar Lungu said on Sunday, pockets of violence have been reported in the Zambian capital, Lusaka, as well as northern, southern and Machinga provinces where supporters, where supporters of the governing Patriotic Front and the opposition United Party for National Development have clashed using machets, axes, slashes, catapults and other objects. Two supporters of the governing party were hacked to death with machets on Friday by attackers suspected to be members of the main opposition party, police said. Four people were arrested in connection with the killings. Even though the Electoral Commission has banned rallies because of the coronavirus clashes between opposing political parties have overwhelmed the police. And on international scene, Australia's Queensland state on Monday extended the COVID-19 lockdown in Brisbane, while soldiers began patrolling Sydney to enforce stay. At home rules as Australia struggles to stop the highly contagious Delta variant of the coronavirus spreading. Queensland said it has detected 13 new locally acquired COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours, the biggest one-day rise the state has recorded in a year. The lockdown of Brisbane, Australia's third biggest city, was due to end on Tuesday, but will now stay in place until late on Sunday. It's starting to become clear that initial lockdown will be insufficient for the outbreak, Queensland State Deputy Prime Minister Steve Miles has said. Queensland has yet to establish how a school child acquired the virus, but as four students at several schools and their families, including that of Australia's Defence Minister Peter Dutton, to stay home. Dutton said today he would miss two weeks of Parliament after he was told he must quarantine at home for 14 days as his two sons attend a school linked to the outbreak. The rising new cases numbers in two of the country's biggest cities come as the squires grows on how the government of Prime Minister Scott Morrison is handling the pandemic. Although Australia's vaccination drive has lacked many other developed economies, it has so far fared much better in keeping its coronavirus number relatively low, with just under 34,400 cases. Prime Minister Morrison has promised lockdown would be less likely once the country inoculates 70% of its population above 16 years of age, up from 19% now. Morrison expects to hit the 70% mark by the end of the year. And we move to New Zealand, where housing crisis is having a punishing impact on marginalized communities and leaving many people homeless. The Human Rights Commission said as it launched an inquiry into the country's red hot property market. A raft of cooling measures enforced by Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern earlier this year has had no impact on runway house prices in New Zealand as investors cashes in on historically low interest rates and cheap access to capital under the government's pandemic-inspired stimulus spending. Property prices in New Zealand have soared by the most among OECD nations, rising about 30% in just past 12 months. The housing crisis in Aotearoa is also a human rights crisis encompassing home ownership, market renting, state housing and homelessness. New Zealand Chief Human Rights Commissioner Paul Hunt said in a statement, 
New Zealand's pandemic-inspired policies have translated into cheaper mortgages, allowing affluent Kiwis to upsize their homes and build up portfolios of rental investment properties, fueling a further surge in house prices. The nearly 30% year-on-year increase on top of a 90% rise in preceding decade has locked out first home buyers and low-income earners. And we move to sport. Lionel Messi will not be training with Barcelona until he signs a new contract at the Spanish club. According to reports, the Argentine has been a free agent since July the 1st, but is still likely to sign a new deal at the Catalan Giants. Despite an announcement that Messi would sign a five-year deal, the contract has yet to be signed. Due to Barcelona's financial struggles, their captain has been forced to accept a pay cut in order to remain at the new camp. The deal which is yet to be signed will reportedly see him take a 50% pay cut. His previous contract expired on June the 30th, meaning that he has been a free agent since July the 1st, but is unlikely to agree terms elsewhere. However, Barcelona forward will not be training with his club until the new contract is signed. And in Tokyo Olympics 2020, the Scots clocked 4 minutes 3.89 seconds in Tokyo to safely progress into the next round on Wednesday. Murray the European champion came second in a heat behind Canada's Gabriela de Bustamford and after insisted there was plenty left in the tank. She said, and I quote, you don't want to have any disrespect to any of the girls out here, but I want to save as much as I can for the final. She said ahead of the Wednesday semis, and also, it's gone as smooth as it could be. I've been out in Japan for a couple of weeks now, so feeling really prepared, and it's really good. It didn't really feel fast, so that's good. I just wanted to qualify for the next round as comfortably as possible. So that felt really good out there today, and I'm looking forward to the semi-finals. End of quote. And that's it on African TV News Now. For more stories, visit our website on africania.tv. Follow us on all our social media platforms on Jointum and Panger. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, share, and leave a comment on the comment section. I'm Deborah Eze. And I am Ayo Many thanks for watching.